Hello and welcome to video number four of building a Class E amateur radio AM transmitter. So in the first videos we talked about the signal source which is a crystal oscillator and that drives a phase splitter and duty cycle adjust board. Uh, and it's right over here. Let's just show you real quick just to remind you. Uh, here's the crystal oscillator with a crystal. It drives the duty cycle adjust board which outputs two square waves that are the duty cycle is adjustable. We want around 40 to 45% duty cycle, and they are 180 degrees out of phase to drive the gates of the MOSFETs of the final amplifier. So that's gonna be mounted right here on the side of the transmitter. Um, this, is the tr this is the RF deck itself, this whole, th this whole assembly, which I haven't started yet, really. But, so I was at the metal store the other day, and I found these nice little, uh, they have just, I don't even know what they're for, but they, uh, they, the, the hole size was perfect for these little Chinese meters. So I decided to weld up a bracket so I'm going to have, uh, be able to, to measure all the parameters of the transmitter. I've got uh, driver voltage, drain voltage, and phase one and two current. So there we go. So today's video is about the power supply and the module, the analog modulator with a current um, emergency uh, overcurrent cutoff um, device. So uh, I designed that part myself and uh, you really have to use overcurrent protection on Class C transmitters. Now you can have tube transmitters and, and solid state transmitters. Tube transmitters, they can handle a lot of abuse. You can, you can make mistakes, you can overdrive them, they can have high standing wave ratios on the antenna and they're gonna survive. They may get a little little red, but you know, they'll, they'll be okay. Class E transmitter, solid state stuff, everything has to work perfectly. Now, I have operated these transmitters with just flying by the seat of my pants, and, and that's it. And, and I've done that successfully uh, for a lot of many hours. But uh, I have blown them up on top of that. So it's better to save yourself the maintenance and just have an overcurrent limiting device. So that's what I've done. So let's go over to the bench here and I'll show you what I've got. This is the power supply itself. This has the drain, power supply for the drain, which is uh, fed by 240 volts on the primary, 45 volts on the secondary. And uh, the other transformer is uh, a five volt output for the negative peak, uh, not negative, yeah, negative peak limiter on the output. So here's the thing. With tube transmitters that you might buy on eBay, you can only modulate maybe up to 100%, and the fidelity isn't gonna be that great. This, the fidelity is gonna be awesome, and you have more talk power because you're able to modulate over 100, over 100%. I've gone up to in excess of 125%. And you can do that through a negative peak limiting circuit. It requires a power supply and some other things. It's, the power supply is on this board, this, uh, this deck, and the actual negative peak limiter is on the modulator deck itself, and we'll go over that in a few minutes. But first things first, let's go over the power supply. So on the front, uh, you turn it on here, simple as that. It has a soft start circuit for the 45 volts, a little overkill, but you know, it's to limit the inrush of current when you're charging the capacitors. So uh, <clears throat> this little antique meter here shows you the five volt power supply for the negative peak limiter. You switch over to the drain power supply. It's only showing 45 volts, but if you look on these two digital meters, it reads the actual digital readout for those two voltages. Unloaded. The five volt power supply for the negative peak limiter is sitting at six and a half volts and unloaded the 45 volt power supply is sitting at 58. The meter, the analog meter doesn't go that high so I just voltage uh, uh, divided that down so it would, wouldn't peg the, the needle but it's just for a, um, a, you know, a dummy check just to see if there's voltage. So when you key the transmitter you're going to start drawing in excess, you know, 10, 10 amps or more. 10 amps. So uh, that'll drag that 58 volts down to the normal 45 volts or a little lower possibly. So once, you, uh, once the, the power supply comes on, you turn the soft start off and you're ready to go. Well, that's that. 
So now the fun part. This is an analog modulator. So, and in the first video I mentioned how everything has to be sequenced. So what you want to do is switch over your antenna relay from your receive to your transmitter. You want to turn on the uh, drive going to the the uh, the drain the, uh, the the gate bus basically, and then you want to turn on the uh, drain power supply to get the RF going out to the antenna, and then you want to turn on your modulator. And when you go to receive, everything goes in reverse. So on the modulator deck, two of those functions are performed here. First, you have the uh, the drain uh, giving power to the drains, which turns your transmitter on. And here, here's a 12 volt power supply coming, simulating coming out of my sequencer. I plug that in. Oh, let me turn this damn thing on, sorry. There, okay. Here we go. So uh, you can hear the relay come on, it delivers power to the transmitter. Secondly, you would be turning on after that your uh, modulator from your audio amplifier. So here's that. And this is all done through that electronic sequencer I mentioned in the first video. So, if you look at the top of this thing, this is using Heising modulation. So what you do is you inject um, audio from your PA amplifier into over here. This relay controls that. And it's coupled onto the drain voltage via this large capacitor and these two chokes. The negative peak limiter, which allows you to go over 100% modulation, is right here. So that 5 volts gets set onto this thing right here. Uh, <clears throat> I added uh, a little touch here. Uh, if you want to see if your negative peak limiter is activating, it's kind of it's, it's a nice little way to adjust your audio. So as you're talking normally into your microphone, you can adjust the volume on the PA amplifier to when this just starts peaking. Then you're at a comfortable level, 100% or a little over 100% modulation for a typical amateur radio receiver to appreciate your audio. You don't want to go into massive peaks because, anyway, this, that's another discussion, but some, most receivers are incapable of taking advantage of those, of those uh, positive peaks. So around a little over 100% modulation, when you start seeing this LED flashing, you're good. So uh, the other parts of this, this whole menagerie over here is this is the current sense over current um, trip module I was talking to you about. So the drain uh, power goes through here. This senses the current. And this is the part that I designed right here, which will turn this relay off if the, trend, if the RF deck draws too much power. Again, you don't want to blow things up. So to see if that circuit works, The only way to test the circuit is to do an overcurrent, you know, condition on your transmitter, which you don't want to do, to see if this thing operates. So I decided to put in a test circuit. So what this does over here, this potentiometer, well, let's, let's hook this up so I can show you. I'm taking just a second here. So to change gears from the um, power supply test, we'll do modulator depth chest test so move this one here so what this meter is going to monitor is the actual voltage coming out of the current sense uh, meter this blue device right here so I'll put that down here and it starts off at two and a half volts so when the device is on, the output is two and a half volts. This will rise in a linear function up to a little under five volts. So I'll just I'll just describe this in just a minute so it'll be clearer. Now this meter is going to measure the injected voltage going to the overcurrent trip. Um, op amp comparator. So right now we're sitting in a normal operating state. So if I 
if I key, put 12 volts in, the drain relay turns on, I'm supplying power to the transmitter, the transmitter turns on. We're all happy. So now I want to test this to see if the overcurrent circuit works. So what I do is I flip this up to test. Voltage going into the protection circuit is zero. Now, what I, okay, so like I was mentioning before, the output out of the current sense is two and a half volts and it rises to five volts, depending on the current going through the, the, uh, the sensor. It's a linear function, so it, at 20 amps, it happens to be 3.35 volts. I decided to use 20 amps as my overcurrent trip. It's just a convenient number. It's high enough to where uh, I can allow for excursions for normal operating conditions, but not high enough to where there will be damage to the transmitter from an overcurrent condition. So at 3.35 volts, this thing will trip. So let's test it out. We'll go up to uh, this potentiometer and I'm going to raise the voltage up until we get above 3.35 volts and you're going to hear this thing turn off. There it goes. So now the overcurrent trip LED turns on, you're off the air, everything's safe. So let's turn this back down. It's, now I turn this down, pretend you, you actually do have an overcurrent condition. This thing will keep things powered off until you manually reset it. So you have to go back down to here to normal operating condition, reset the relay, and you're back going again. And here you can press the transmitter to your heart's content. So that's how that all works. Now, <clears throat> again, building classy transmitters is not cookie cutter. You have to kind of like build your own, roll your own here. So this is my rolling my own. I don't really post schematics because the schematic I originally designed for this changed three times. I don't even have a schematic of this thing right now. So good luck. <laughs> anyway, so this is the next step. I'm going to mount these in the cabinet. Uh, the next step is the fun part. The next step, we're going to actually start building the RF deck, the actual transmitter itself. So um, I'll be doing that over the next few weeks, months, however long it takes. Once we get that done, then we can actually have some fun and start going on the air and doing some testing. I'll do a testing video first to show you how to tune these things, which is an art by itself. And then we'll go on the air and have an actual QSO. So that's it for now. Till next time, have a good day.